All right, let's take a look at theming in Jasper Report Server. Now I'm working with Jasper Report Server 6.3, and we've got the nice blue default logo. Blue for the background, nice icons at the top, and a nice uh, logo for typical Jaspersoft. Now all this is customizable, and it's also customizable per tenant. I'm gonna log in as super user, and again, I get dropped to my default homepage, nice white background. Blue is the overarching color that we see and then some nice logos for all my different uh, pieces and parts of my home screen. Now by tenant, we can have a different theme. For now, let's start with our first theme and just see how do we get a theme going and what are the pieces and parts of a theme. First, I logged in a super user just so I can see a couple extra folders. Let me go to the repository by clicking view repository. Let's take a look at those. I see the root folder, I see organizations, which would contain all of my tenants or organizations. In my case, I only have a couple. But we could have Pepsi and Coke in here, and they could each have their own theme and not know about the other's theme. Pepsi would be a nice blue background, and Coke would be a nice red background, perhaps. Different logos, etc. Public folder, of course, temp, and then themes. This is where we want to work. By default, the default theme is active. You can tell because it's bold. It has a lot of stuff in it. Every piece of CSS needed is included here or in the subfolders here. Now, if we look here, we have our attribute CSS, uh, our buttons are here, our containers are here, controls. We've done a nice job of segregating the CSS items. Menus are here, so you can find what you want. We could export this entire theme, search through this with a tool, and find the theme and how it's being applied and override it if we wanted to. There's another way to do that, and let's look at that other way as well. Another piece of this is images. The default theme has a bunch of images in it, many, many images. Any images we want to override, we can include as well in our theme and then refer to it in our CSS and it will use our uh, image instead. You can see most of them are PNGs and uh, that works great. You do see some GIFs in here as well. Let's look at a couple other themes because uh, the default one's kind of complex to start with. Let's start with something a little more simple. We also have Easy Access, Jasper Dark, and Pod Summer. Now I can right click on these and set, it, set as active theme. When I do this, it affects everybody logged into my server. Now I don't have anybody logged in besides me, so it's okay. But if you were to do this in production, it would affect everybody currently logged into your system. So another way to do this is, let me set default back as active, is to go to the URL, and since I already have a question mark there, I'll add an ampersand and say theme equals Jasper Dark. Now you see I've done that before, and it changes the theme for me without affecting anyone else. So it's a great way to test by changing the URL up here. Let's go back to Jasper Dark and take a look. It has an overrides underscore custom.css. That's where all of its CSS is located. It also has some images, a whole bunch of images, and there are about 20 of them, whatever it wants to override. And you can see what it did. It kind of changed all of our background, the search button's a little different, and the bar at the bottom's different as well. Let's start with this theme as our starting point, and then we'll, we'll build on it, or at least see how we do our first theme with this one. To get started, I'm gonna right click on this theme and say download the theme. It's gonna download it to my downloads folder. And you see it gives me a zip file with the stuff that we saw in it already. I'm going to extract all of that, put it in a nice folder for me. And I'm just going to use this folder. So I'm just going to rename it whatever I want to call it. I'm doing demo theme, so let's call it demo theme. And I've got my overrides custom and my images. Now I don't want any of the Jasper Dark images for now, so I'm going to delete them. There we go. I'm going to leave the images folder because it doesn't hurt anything, and I know I might want it in the future, so I'll leave it there. And then I'm going to open up my CSS file, my favorite text editor. I'm using Notepad++, but you can use whatever you want. Now, inside of uh, Jasper Dark, there's a, a bunch of stuff, right? A bunch of uh, custom CSS. Let's look at the, the color they're using. Let's see what color that is. There we go. Okay, nice blue, looks okay. So we can start with this color and then see where we wanna go from here. But to see where we wanna apply that color, 
We're looking at the banner. I'm not sure where that's at, ex at exactly. Let's take a look at how we can find it. Again, we could look at the default, see what it's doing, and adjust from there. But there's also the dev tools. So in all of your browsers, if you go to usually more tools or settings or something like that, you can up open up your developer tools. But if you're in Windows, you can also hit Control Shift I or F12. If you're on a Mac, Control Option I will do the same thing. The dev tools are this guy at the bottom. We use it for JavaScript, CSS, all sorts of fun stuff. And it has this nice inspection utility right here. If I click that, I can hover over all of the items and see what I want to inspect. So I'm going to go up to the banner because it's most obvious. When I click it, it stops wherever it finds that piece of HTML. In my case, it's div ID equals banner, class ID equals banner. So that makes it easy for me. You can see I also have my logo here. I could change my logo if I wanted to as well. If I go to logo, you see the URL is images slash logo.png. Now to change that is as simple as replacing the logo. To change our banner is as simple as changing the background color. I come over here, change my background color, something a little different. Okay, So I can play around with it and see what the differences are. I'm going to take that kind of purple fuchsia plum looking color there. I'm going to copy that. I know it's called banner, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to find where I'm at. Here's my banner. I'm going to place my code there. Now I'm going to actually remove everything else from this file just because I don't need it for now. I can always add it back in later when I figure out what I want to do. But just to keep a real simple example, let's include only what we need. There we go. We've got our banner, background color going to that nice purple. Let's save our changes. Go back to our folder. Remember, we only have two things in here now. We could add a logo and all that other fun stuff. I'm going to right click on these and zip them up. Now, this is the only trick. You include those two things only, or only the things within this folder. And you get your, your uh, zip file for your theme. Now, if you open up your theme again, it should look something like this, maybe a few more files, but something like that. But you don't have, it's not inside of a folder. Very commonly, a mistake is made where they put it inside of another folder, which can't happen. Okay, so I've zipped it up. Go back to the browser. I'm done with my dev tools. I'm going to right click on themes and say upload a theme. Give it a good name. Choose my file, my zip file, and choose to upload. Now that was quick. Demo theme is there, and now I can simply say demo theme and see if it applies. Now mine applied very quickly uh, because you know I've already made that change inside the browser as well, and it's a very small uh, theme. But if I look, I have my demo theme. It actually excluded my images directory for now because there's nothing in it, and that's fine. I still have it in my local directory. And now I can add whatever images and whatever other items I find that I want to override. Every bit and piece of the UI is customizable. You can even do turn things off or turn things back on using a custom theme. So play around with it. When I'm done, all I'm left with is my overrides custom.css any images I have in here, and a zip file uploaded to the directory. Now, if I want to set this as the active theme for everybody, I right-click, set as active theme. If I want to apply it to a specific organization, I can go into the organization folder, add the theme there, and do the same process. That way, this theme would only apply to that organization if that's what I wanted to do.